Welcome back to Royal Swag Auto. Uh, I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video, and I do apologize. Uh, I've been having this big problem with the PT overheating. But before I tell you about that, let me give you a quick, um, a quick update on the Ford Torrent. Or uh, um, yeah, a quick update on the Ford Torrent. So. Uh, I may have mentioned this in a previous video. I don't remember. I do apologize if I'm repeating myself again. But last year, my on the 07 Ford Torres, the oil pump stopped working in the middle of the highway. So I had to pull over and, you know, fast forward. Um, when I took it to the shop, I found out that it was the oil pump. And uh, the the thing with the Ford Torres, it showed that it was a um, low pressure, um, low pressure sensor on the dashboard itself. Okay, so on the dash, or like on the display, like where you're spin, spin, uh, your cluster gauge. Okay, so. It displayed, no, it actually displayed um, camshaft position sensor, shoot the code for that, on the display itself, on the cluster display, you know, and I'm like, wow, I never seen that before on the car. And then the engine light came on and it was showing the um, low oil pressure sensor. So I took it to a shop and that was the only two codes that the car was showing. Remember that, the only two codes. So I take it to the shop. He tells me, hey, your oil, your oil pump, you know, stop working. It ain't no good. And you also need a, um, you know, a camshaft synchronizer. You know, um, never heard of that part before until I ran into this issue with the Ford Torres. So I'm not going to explain what the camshaft synchronizer is because I'm trying not to make this video too long. But... I went, I got a new oil pump, I got a brand new camshaft position sensor, I got a brand new camshaft synchronizer, I got a brand new um, oil pressure sensor, and I paid the guy to put these parts on. So he put on the oil pump, he didn't do that, he put the camshaft um, synchronizer, he did install that, yes. You know, because there's a certain way you have to, you got to make sure that it's, um, it's in line and it's timed with the engine. If it's not timed with the engine, then, you know, the engine ain't going to start. Okay, he did that. The camshaft position sensor, he did not put on. The oil pressure sensor, I believe he put that on. And um, what I also discovered is uh, when I drove the car home, the car was sounding like a hot rod. <laughs> it sounded like a hot rod. I'm like, what the what on earth is going on? And on top of that, not only was it sounding like a hot rod, but if she wasn't accelerating, you know, um, like I know she can, like, you know, so something was going on. I'm like, what on earth is going on? I take the car back home. The guy's going to tell me you need a new engine. You know, um, another mechanic told me, yeah, I can get you another engine for 1400 1500 you know, so somebody else is telling me they can get me an engine, you know, for, uh, they didn't give me no specific price, but uh, as shady as he is, uh, this shady mechanic, um, you know, 10 minutes from where I'm at, I'm not saying no names, well, I am, it's called um, Affordable Auto Care, if I'm correct. Uh, here in Alabama, so do not go there. I do not recommend anybody to go there. They will rip you off. They will mess your car up so you can end up spending more money. 
So let me tell you what happened right quick, okay? This is a quick summary before I get into the PT Cruiser. So when I brought the car home and, um, you know, I was going to sell the car. I was going to sell the car and I was, you know, I was kind of, you know, battling like, okay, should I sell the car or should I just get another engine, you know, buy an engine, another engine, you know, to put in the car and call it a day. You know, I was kind of, you know, undecisive about that. You know, I couldn't make up my mind about that. But then after a week or so, something told me to take the car to somebody you trust. So I took the car to somebody I trust and I had them inspect the engine and tell me is the engine good, yes or no. So they checking the engine out and they telling me, hey brother, um, your spark plug wires are crisscross. That's why I wasn't that's why um the car wasn't making as much power and accelerating as fast as I know it's able to because of that. And the reason it was sounding like a hot rod, uh, when he looked down, he said, hey, brother, your exhaust manifold, um, yeah, there's a bunch of bulbs missing from that, and the gasket is missing from that. So that's why your car is sounding like it's, um, you know, it's a hot rod. So remember, I told you those two codes when I first sent it bought it to that um that shop affordable auto care so now the engine light is still on and then when i hook my scanner up because i got a scanner a good scanner from auto amazon a good scanner from amazon it gives you the code number and it tells you the name it tells you what it is camshaft position sensor o2 sensor spark plug misfire it tells you that you know what i'm saying so it shows you the code and it tells you that, which is pretty cool. Um, so when I put my scanner back in, my scanner picked up seven different codes. Okay, seven different codes. So remember when I told you there was only two codes in the car before I took it to him? When I got it back from him, it had seven seven different codes, you know what I'm saying, that I picked up in my scanner. So a part of me, a small part of me wanted to, you know, give this guy some choice words. But then the other part of me was like, you know, just, I just decided, hey, whatever, man, I just need to move forward and figure out how to fix this. So that's when I took it to the mechanic I trust. He said the spark plug is crisscross, cross wired, and he fixed that. My exhaust manifold, bolts was missing, and the gasket was gone, and he ended up fixing that. And it's running better now, a whole lot better. And uh, it only cost me sixty dollars, but then now I am I have come to the conclusion that affordable car care took my catalytic converter out and put a bad catalytic converter in along with a bad O2 sensor because now I'm getting the um, I'm getting a code for the downstream O2 sensor. So yeah, I have reasons to believe that he done switched out my cat converter. I ain't got no hard physical proof to take the cord or anything, so I'm just gonna cut my losses and just you know, make preparations to get me another cat, a brand new catalytic converter, brand new O2 sensor, have that put in, and hopefully that knocks that code out and bring my baby back, you know, to normal. You know what I'm saying? So, that is the full update on the Ford Torres. After this guy did all of that, um, I had to, and he also drained uh, the coolant out of the Ford Torres and replaced it with water. So I had to drain all of that water out and I had to replace it with brand new antifreeze or coolant. Okay? So that is the full update on the 074 Torres. Now for my PT Cruiser. 
my PT cruiser have been overheating and I've been wondering, you know, like why? Why is it overheating? I didn't change the thermostat out a million times. I didn't change the radiator cap. Um, brought it to the mechanic. He said he can't find no leaks at all. And I'm like, so I believe he ended up putting water in there. And I'm like, why is this thing so overheating? They bled the system, but there was still water in the radiator, even though they bled the system. They did not put coolant in there. And I don't know why I didn't, um, I don't know why I didn't, you know, catch that. Why I didn't catch that at that point. Like, okay, yo, bro, don't put water in my, don't put water in my car. If y'all know me, then y'all know that I hate putting water in my car, in my radiator. Only antifreeze, you know what I'm saying? The correct antifreeze for my specific make and model. You know what I'm saying? So, I have to drain all of that coolant out. And, um, you know, replace it with antifreeze. Um, I'm like, why? So recently, I went, like I said, drained the water out. Put, um, I took the thermostat out. I took the thermostat completely out. I took the gasket that was on the thermostat and put it back onto the thermostat housing, bolt everything back together, um, put antifreeze in there. I bled the system the right way. And for the PT to bleed the system, you know, there has to be like a steady stream. Now, it's going to start off dripping, but once you see that steady stream coming out that, um, that bleeder valve, then that's when you know the system is, the system has been bled correctly, then you tighten it back up. So I have took the thermostat out because I didn't change the thermostat like, what, four or five times and the car still was overheating. I changed the therm, uh, radiator cap, car still was overheating. They're telling me there's no leak nowhere. They can't find no leaks nowhere. I'm like, what's going on? So recently, I took that thermostat out. I've been driving it for a couple of days, but the temperature has been like about 50 and 60 and like low 70, you know, um, and the temp's been doing good, you know, it's been doing real good, but this coming weekend, the temperature is going to hit about, the temperature going to hit about, uh, I would say, 83 degrees. So when the temperature hits 83 degrees, that's when I really, really, really want to test out uh, if what I did, did it actually work? Because if it will actually work, and that's telling me that that thermostat is faulty, you know what I'm saying? Because the whole job of the thermostat is supposed to open up once it reaches a certain temperature. So that way the coolant can go in and cool the engine jam, cool the engine, the engine down. I don't know why I can't speak English today. I apologize. So once the engine gets cooled down and the temperature goes down to a certain level, you know, a certain temperature, then the thermostat is going to close back up until the temperature reaches a certain, you know, a certain temperature. Once it gets, you know, hot enough, the thermostat is going to open up, and that it basically does that the whole time you're driving. It opens and closes to keep that engine cool. You know what I'm saying? So this Saturday, um, it's going to be 83 degrees, and I'm going to put what I did to the ultimate test. Did I fix my overheating issues with the PT Cruiser for me to move on with other stuff? I still need to... Um, because I got into an accident, so I had to change my fender, my bumper, uh, this bracket thing on my bump is kind of broken, completely off, so I have to change, I need to get another bumper, uh, I need to paint my fender, um, I'm just going to put some more layers all over the car, you know, just, you know, refresh, you know, paint refresh, uh, is what I'm calling it, I don't know if that's the exact term for it, but that's what I'm calling it, so... Saturday, we're going to see once the temperature hits 83, um, did it actually work? You know, taking a thermostat out, did it actually work? You know, um, of course, I bled the system and there's, you know, the correct antifreeze. 
you know, coolant, you know, in the radiator now. And like I said, I've been driving it and it's been doing good. It hasn't been overheating at idle. It would, you know, stay at operating temperature at idle, but then when I start driving, it would go down, you know, under operating temperature, like it would go down a little bit, which I'm okay with because like I said, your vehicle, over, your engine overheats, that, cause, that can cause damage to other components in your engine that can cause your um, your cylinders to warp and, you know, just a bunch of problems. So, so this is part one of uh, what's going to go down <laughs> the PT Cruiser. Just wanted to give you a quick full update on both cars, the 07 Ford Torres and the 07 Chrysler PT Cruiser Sport. What do you mean it's a sport? You might be asking me. Well, I went on site somewhere and I typed in my VIN number and that's what popped up. 2007 Chrysler PT Cruiser Limited Sport. I'm like, word, I got the sport edition of the PT? That's what's up. It's non-turbo. It ain't the GT. But, you know, so yeah, thank you for tuning in to um, part one into, uh, you know, overheating, PT overheating, you know, um, I guess I'll title it um, overheating slash have I fixed it or did I fix it, something like that. Thank you for tuning in to part one. And like I said, this weekend, uh, I'm going to put it to the test, the PT to the test. So thank you. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So you can get these videos. You know, you can get notifications for these videos the second it comes out, the second it's released. Because it's not all the time I'm going to have time to, you know, share it to Facebook and share it here and share it there. So hit that subscribe button. It's free. All right. Until next time, this is Pastor Mana saying, peace.